Did you hear that 91% of guys that use Dove Men Plus Care antiperspirant recommend it? Dove Men Plus Care user Daniel said that his armpits aren't the worst thing at the gym anymore. Make the locker room a better place and pick up some new Dove Men Plus Care for your gym bag at your local retailer. A few football things to wrap up here on the, on the topics we've been discussing. With the Bears and Trubisky, and right. I, my, my, my response when those guys in Chicago were asking me about it, um, Sylvie and, and Waddle was off that day, but whatever, the, the, the afternoon guys in, in, on ESPN 1000 were asking me what I think about when they should put Trubisky on the field. And I said, it should be determined exclusively by when they think it's in the best interest of Trubisky to put him on the field. Don't do it in the interest of trying to salvage an unsalvageable season. You could put Joe Montana on that team right now. They'd be the fourth best team in the NFC North. So don't do not do it thinking, well, we can salvage a season. Do it thinking oh, I, this is when the best time is to put the kid I on the field. I don't think there's any thought that Trubisky is going to salvage the season. But I, that's I, what I the fans think... are screaming. They're seeing a quarterback they don't like. Well, put the kid in well, and No, we'll no, no. I, I don't think they're screaming to put him in to say he can save our season. I think they're screaming to put him in to say, dude, he's a quarterback of the future. Let's go. Let's just start it right now. Let's get through his growing pains so we can grow and get into uh, to next year. So it, it, I'm with Herm. It's going to happen in, in a couple of games. I, I do think that. But I do think you should be in a position to give him the best chance. And the best chance is with the healthiest your O-line can be. Sit and head the ribs hurt. Kyle Long hasn't played yet. Let those guys be on the field. You know, let, let him, let, let's have the best group in front of him to give him the best chance uh, to succeed. And then obviously you can help along with the play calling as well. But yeah, I do believe, and, and I think Glennon, you know, I don't think Glennon has been horrible, but to Herm's point, he turned the ball over. And to Herm's point, and he's right, a rookie can turn the ball over. But Glennon, well, how different would it have been an opening day to playing the team that was in the Super Bowl if your receivers actually caught the ball and you won that game that Glennon was putting right on the money to your receivers? Would anybody be singing a different tune? Of course. You know, at some, if the Bears I, are one and one right I now think, with a win over Atlanta, they'd be singing I think a different. All tune. that would be it was to just delay the inevitable a little longer is what it would have done. So I, I certainly don't want to heap all, all this on Glennon at all and turning the ball over. He knows you can't do that, and Herm is right. You can get a rookie to do that. So I, I do think it'll come sooner rather than later uh, with the switch. But I do think a key component is let's make sure your old line is, is about as healthy as it can be, you know, even though you're into the season. And that's tough to keep saying uh, to give him the best chance. Normally, when you look at a schedule and you say, what's the time that you might consider making that move? You look at the bye week. The Bears have a week nine bye followed by two home games against Green Bay and Detroit. But... Here's another little opening in the schedule worth looking at. They play on Thursday night at Green Bay in week four. Then they don't play again until a week from that Monday okay. yeah. at home in week five. So that would be almost two full weeks, like mm-hmm. 11 days right. if you wanted to get the rookie up and going. So it, if those would be two little junctures in the Could schedule be. that you might look at as spots where they might Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't be shocking. So that would be after the fourth game. So they play Pittsburgh, and then, they, then they're at Green Bay, and then it would be a home game against Minnesota. Really good defense, by they're the way. They're all good defense. Yeah, they are. Pittsburgh, Green Bay, Minnesota, Baltimore, Carolina. You know, that's your next five. So... You know, you, you can't escape that, so you, you can't wait to say, oh, it's maybe a better defense for him to play against. I mean, at some point, if you feel it, it's time to get him in, then you get him in. Mike and Mike presented by Progressive Insurance, where they'll compare rates for you so you get the best deal, even if it's not with Progressive. Saving you time and money. Now, that's Progressive. Call a click today. The other team that we've had under a bit of a spotlight here is the Giants, and the Eagles can bury the Giants this weekend. And you, go like have a lot of experience in that NFC East. And it always feels like every, every sort of generation, and it, and it works out cyclically, it doesn't always stay the same, but teams in that division have each other's number. Like if you just yes. watched in recent years, the Giants have the Cowboys number. Eli is 20 and 13 against Dallas and Washington. He's 4 and 12 against the Eagles, all those numbers being since 2009. So, you know, it, with, with some iteration of the teams that they're playing on, he's playing on right now. He has great success against Dallas, great success against Washington, no success against Philly, and that's where he's going this weekend. And only three out of 132 teams to start 0-3 have made the playoffs since 1990 when they went to the current format. So they can basically get buried this weekend. So here's Ben McAdoo saying, quote, We can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. That's insanity. It's not working. So we're going to look to make some changes this week. 
maybe a little bit more drastic this week, to use your word. I guess the reporter had used the word drastic. If that means me giving up play calling duties, that's something that the offensive staff will look at that we'll talk about. So Mike, what would what would constitute to you drastic changes? Obviously, well, someone certainly. else calling plays oh, yeah, would be yeah. one. That would be one. How Absolutely. About, uh, but whoever's calling the plays, if that offensive line, if you're not finding well, ways to help them on the field, what, I don't know that it matters. What is, what's drastic? Drastic is somebody else calling the play, somebody being fired, which we saw in Cincinnati. Right. Uh, C- you know, Cincinnati. Um, somebody else calling plays is, is the next step. Everybody has a job, but somebody else is calling plays. Or changing personnel. Well, again, wh- wh- how are you going to change the personnel? Changing we, scheme. We, well, it's, you wouldn't be changing scheme that, that's part of play calling. You're just, you, you don't go in and say, all right, throw everything out. You just, they have plays in their arsenal that helps linemen. They With just, max protection they just, or some sort of more well, you protection. Could, you either bring more guys in, and, which you have in your arsenal. They've done it. They, they've, what, brought in an extra block? Or, what, just 14, 14 of 108 four, So only 14 times, but they do it. I mean, they have the, it's not like they have to get the playbook out and add pages to it. It's in the playbook. Having extra blockers in and or helping by chipping or a tight end or something, you just have to do it. What you have, in my opinion, is a coach that says, this is our philosophy, this is what we do, and everybody needs to do their job. And I get it from a professional standpoint, you do, but it doesn't always work that way. You have trouble up front, so... The whole idea, as I said, for a coach is to put your players in the best position to have a play work. And the best best position, because they don't run the ball, that's, that's another thing they can run it more. They're, they've had the least amount of attempts in the league at 30 rushing attempts. And to Herm's point, and he's right, you run the ball and get two yards, you run the ball and get three yards, you're like, well, I can throw it and get maybe five yards. Why do I need to run it anymore? Because we can't run it. Attempts matter. And they need to up it. Philadelphia needs to up it as well. Absolutely, they do. But for, for the Giants, you, you have plays. You can do it. You just have to have the mindset to say, okay, we have an issue here. Now, publicly, you can, you know, I know he said that about uh, Eli, but he backed Derek Flowers, Justin Pugh backed Derek Flowers, and that's what you do publicly. But privately, listen, it's a business, and it's about winning. Your, your game plan, and when your offensive coaches are meeting for the game plan, what you talk about is, okay, how do we keep Eli on his feet? What do we need? That should be question one. How's Odell's ankle? First question, quite honestly. And then how do we keep Eli on his feet? And that is, okay, what do we do to help the offensive line? What's going to do the best thing for us? And they have to do it. They just haven't been doing it, which has been stunning to me. How many times can you see the same thing happen and not adjust to it and just basically say, well, he's got to block and do a better job? Well, I mean, come on. That's why it frustrated me a little bit that he got on Eli personally after the game, which is, I get it. And Eli had a great response. I'm looking at a quote here from Eli. There was a question. I'm not sure. Was this in a, just in the media availability yesterday or was this from his WFAN interview? I'm not sure where it came from. But either way, the question is, is there anything about McAdoo's public criticism of you that disturbed you or makes you feel a need to talk to him? And Eli's answer, which is terrific, was no. It's a part of being in the NFL. You can't be sensitive, and I think everyone's gotten very sensitive, players and everybody. If someone says anything negative about you or you did something wrong, then you've got a problem. Coach McAdoo and I have a great relationship. I think he understands that. I told him when he first got here, I enjoy being coached. If I screw something up, let me know. I want to be coached. So we talked about things, and there's some things I've gotten to that, that I know, excuse me, I've got to do that I've got to be better at, which is a great answer. Yeah. Great answer. But the only thing I can think to myself is if Eli had gotten up there when, when the coach says sloppy quarterback play because he didn't get a ball snapped on fourth down. And I get it. That's the quarterback's job. Yeah. It was a sloppy play. But sloppy quarterback play in a postgame press conference amounts to pretty serious criticism by a coach in the NFL in this day and age. If Eli had said something like, well, I tell you what, it's 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 um, it's 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 it's. Um, What's the word I'm looking for here? When you do uh, stubborn, it's stubborn coaching. We just will not help my left tackle no matter what. Even if you just want to call him out, Stu- stubborn coaching. We will not bring more guys into protection no matter what. And that's why I'm getting sacked repeatedly and hit yeah, repeatedly. I, I, if Eli says that, 
It's the worst crime that's ever been committed by a quarterback ever. He's throwing his coach under the bus and all that kind of thing. And I understand that the coach is the coach and Eli is yeah, a player. Yeah, there, there's something to but that. But Eli yeah. has a $100 million contract and has won two championships and is going to the Hall of Fame and has done a thousand times more for that franchise than the coach has. So there was something about that that kind of rubbed me the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but but I do think there is something coach to player, player to coach. That being said, I still disagree with him saying that. You can – as. It, Eli's answer there about being coached, be coached at the facility. Be coached in the meeting room. Be coached on the practice field. <clears throat> I don't think he needed to do that publicly. That, that, that's just me. I, I think it's, it's all for one and one for all. Boring on your, your postgame stuff. And I know other people like when you get called out, hey, they're just being honest. You know what? Save the honesty for the meeting room as far as I'm concerned, for the people that matter. And they better get honest with themselves. <laughs> and just because you don't think you don't think that that Eric Flowers is getting ripped in meetings. You don't think he's getting, you know, for I've been in those meetings when you're not doing well. There's ripping. And then there's a point when you know it, when you're getting ripped so much that they stop ripping you and just start trying to build you back up when you're like, OK, that's an issue. And I don't know what's going on in those meetings. But he's getting beat at that whole old line. Justin Pugh did the right thing by saying, hey, it's not one, it's all of us. Because they all, they're struggling overall as an offensive line. But there's no doubt that Flowers is struggling. And there's no doubt to me they are banging their heads against the wall by not adjusting with formations and or plays and or ways to help keep Eli up. I, I, I don't understand it. They could be buried if they lose. The only thing I'll say is... Starting 0-3 is bad, obviously. But right now they're 0-2. No one in the division is better than 1-1. No, no, that's exactly right. And listen, you, you, every team has their issues, sure. right? So yeah. if the, let's, let's, let's say the Eagles beat them. Then Philly will be 2-1. and The Giants will be 0-3. It's not an insurmountable no, not. margin. Not in that division. What is Dallas going to be this year? What, I, the, Washington's not going to win 11 games this year. I, I agree. Think. Dallas could. That, that's the one team where Dallas they get could. everything kind of righted. That's the team you could see running away. But I, I think that, that that's a gonna, competitive enough division. The Giants still have some time to figure it out. But it's getting late early out here. Mike and Mike presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Four-year-old girl hit in the face on a foul ball yesterday at Yankee Stadium. Fifth inning of a win over the Twins. The fan, a toddler, taken to Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. She was attending the game with her grandparents. The girl's father and grandfather addressed the media saying, quote, it's too early to tell if she would need surgery. Obviously, it's the family's private business, just how seriously hurt she is, and, and no one should be inquiring into that. Having said that, of course, there's an enormous amount of conversation again. And as I've said many times, it would be nice if we had this conversation before someone gets hit in the face rather than after about whether they need to do more things involving netting or other measures to uh, increase player safety at these ballparks. Our Mark Teixeira, who saw it a million times in his career, said this yesterday. It's really tough. I mean, I, I played a few years in the big leagues, and, and I saw so many guys, you know, kids getting hit in the stands. After my first few years, I stopped looking into the stands. When I'm playing first base and there was a line drive down the first baseline, I stopped looking in the stands because you can see some pretty bad stuff. And you see what these players are doing right now. I mean, they are visually shaken up here, as they should be. I mean, you see a little kid getting hit like that. It just tears your heart apart. So uh, I have a lot of confidence in Rob Manfred. I'm a big Rob Manfred fan. He's going to fix this. You know, If the teams don't do it on their own, there's going to be mandates for more netting down the lines. See, that, that's a part I don't know. Where, where can the mandates come from? Rob Manfred can't stand up there and say every ballpark put netting, you know, down to the, to, to the foul pole. I don't believe, I don't believe he has the power to do that. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I so, think if the majority of the owners don't want it, then I don't know how he yeah, makes it happen. So I don't know what, I don't know if it's an individual thing and that's how it's going to be done or not. But to me, it just, we have talked about this before. It just seems to me, you almost, I, I think you have to put the netting up. And, and as I, I'll continue to say, fans will adjust. Fans will adjust to it just like players adjust to things. I, I, you just you sit there and you want to blame the parents. You want to blame this. So the bottom line is people are getting hurt. And you just, you just don't want that. You don't want to be in that situation because you sit there. For those that are blaming the parents, okay, you blame the parents. Now, what if it's your kid and someone's blaming you? Your kid's laying in the hospital. I mean, that, that, that's what we're talking about here. 
And you know in baseball, really more than any other sport, right? I'm trying to just rattle through the sports in my head of somebody getting hurt. You know, the errant golf ball, you know, that could hit somebody in the head and cause it. And hockey, I mean, the puck will go up. The ho- well, the listen, net, the, the, we've the, uh, had, I mean, one of the reasons with the, the the netting that they put up, the I believe it was a little girl got killed. I mean, uh, that, I can't even fathom that. And the netting went up. It was after that, I believe, right, Hembo? I, so, I mean... You want to talk about the ultimate reaction to something. Somebody, somebody had to lose their life. But I, so I, to me, it's to the point. Put the netting up. The, the fans will adjust to it, and you go from there. I mean, I, 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 do we think fans are going to start boycotting and say, I'm not going to pay those ticket prices then because now you're obscuring my view? I, I, you know, I don't know some of the fallout from it, the tentacles from it, if you try and do that. But but it's being done in places. You mentioned in Japan, it's being done. You know, and what does it look like? And ask you. You could ask fans there what they think. I mean, you could find out where it's being done and see. But for for the safety of the fans and and the kid here, but the safety of the fans, I, I just think we're at that time to do it. Would you agree? I yes. mean, you, you think it's that? Time? I think we we are past the time. I, I I would say that you're right. I'm not saying it now because the little girl got hit. We've talked about this before, and we thought look, we went through a been little up. bit of a. a Phase. I forget exactly what part of the season it was last year, but there was a little stretch where this happened a bunch of times yeah. in a row. And we yelled and screamed about it on this show, and a million other people did as well. And it looked like something was going to get done, and a few things did, but there were, there were no, there was not any. Well, obviously, not enough of a change that it affected this. And then the conversation just went away. And that's what will happen here if no one does anything. The conversation will, will move on to the next thing, and people will forget until the next time right. a little kid gets hit in the face at the game. And so that's why I keep saying, and, let's do this before the kid yeah, gets and, hit in the face. And, and let's not say, oh, God, you, this is so reactionary. Well, it, it somewhat is, but not just to this little girl getting hit. This has been going on and on, and on. it's happened and happened, as Greeny said, talked about and talked about. At some point, you just have to say enough is enough. You know, we need to put the netting up. All right, let's move on. Mike and Mike, we got a bunch of stuff in the hopper today. Next up is Over Under, brought to you by Cabbage, who created a simple way for businesses to get flexible access to up to $100,000. That's Cabbage with a K. The staff has put together some over-unders for us, Mike. Let's go through a couple of these quickly here. Over Under on the number of home runs that Giancarlo Stanton will hit this year is set at 60. Mm. He has 56 with 10 games remaining. I want to say over. I mean, I absolutely want to say over. See, I hate when they don't put a half on it because I think he's going to hit exactly 60. So that's, that's, so that's, I'll that's change a push. It. 60 and a half. I'm going to go under. If it were 60 and a half, I think I would as and well. And if it was 59 and a half, I'm going to go over. And I think I'd, he's going I'd to hit 60. I'd love to see 60. I'd Me love too. to see him with a home run number that has a six in it. Next, over under on number of home runs for Aaron Judge is 50. He has 45 with 10 games remaining. He did hit two in his last three games, and we know he went for that long period without it. So say 49 and a half over that under. That one I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under as well. Yep. Next, over under the week that Mitch Trubisky starts for the Bears, we're going to go week 10. I'm going to go under that. Their bye week is week 9, and as we pointed out again, they have that mini break. They go from a Thursday to a Monday, so it's... Between their fourth and fifth game. Right. Green Bay and Minnesota, it's Thursday to a Monday, so plenty of days uh, there. So I'm going to go under Week 10. I think he'll be in before that. Mm. I, don't, I don't think it needs to be. We're so caught up on this bye week thing. You know, you can start giving him more rep, reps in practice. You don't have to just make the switch and all of a sudden, you know, you can get a few more and start building up to it to where it doesn't have to be on a bye week all the time. Understood. So I'll go under. If you, do, if you wait till after that for the Minnesota game, though, now you're on a short week. You know, then you're playing Carolina. But look, their defense, they're playing a murderer's row of defenses no matter what you do. You you, you can't. So I think it's under. I'm going to go, or week 10, I'm going to go under. Yes. I would go over if we were were doing week four. Uh, Excuse me, week five. Uh, Over or under the number of NFC South teams that will be undefeated after this week. The over-under is at one and a half. So right now we have three, Atlanta, and Atlanta goes to Detroit. Tampa Bay's undefeated. They go to Minnesota. New Orleans goes to Carolina, which is undefeated. So Carolina's going to win. I think Carolina's going to win. Um, is Atlanta going to win at Detroit? Those are both undefeated teams. But yeah, and those other two games, Tampa, Minnesota, Atlanta, Detroit. Where, where are we on Bradford right now? Where, where do we stand on that? Day-to-day. So that I mean that's a that's a big and it was in this, and isn't it? from what we got gathered last it was a non-contact injury which is not that's even worse news for a guy who's got history of yep. knees. Yep. And I'm going to say Tampa's going to win. So that's that's two. So that's already over. 
So yeah, we, whatever yeah. else happens. I'll go I'm over go as well. Over. I just saw I thought it was all three of them or none. Over one and a half. I'll go over as well. We'll have Shefty in here in an hour. Maybe he'll have something for us on Sam Bradford. Over under on the number of owners you think would vote against an extension for Roger Goodell at one and a half. That's a really good question. Um, again, Shefty, when he comes in, will we'll detail for you his story that the deal is done, uh, for all intents and purposes done, Goodell's going to get his extension despite whatever um, – Whatever, whatever opposition to it Jerry Jones put up, do you think that there's more than one owner out there that would vote against an extension for Roger Goodell? There probably is, but I think the majority still want him to be uh, the commissioner. But to sit there out of 32 or early 31 that are sitting there with Green Bay being publicly owned, um, I, I would say there would be two. There's no way I'd sit there and say all of them you know, want the extension. But I do think... The, the vast majority do want to give him the extension. And, guys, I'm going to skip down to the last one here in the interest of time. I like this question. Over under on the number of rookies that will rush for 1,000 yards this year at three and a half. Right now you've got Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, and Chris Carson all in the top ten in the league in rushing. Samaji Pirine, Tariq Cohen, Christian McCaffrey, Joe Mixon, and others are all off to good. Yeah, they are. But well. those, all those others, Pirine and Cohen and McCaffrey and Mixon, they're not like their main backs. They're not getting the lion's share, at least at this point. You know, of carries where Fournette, Dalvin well, Cook got benched for a fumble in the preseason. Yeah. Now they're finally going to get yeah, the ball yeah, again. But you know, so he's good. He he is good. But as I said, they're they're running back by committees, or they haven't gotten lion shares just yet. I think where, Mixon is going to get the majority of the carries. At some in Cincinnati. point, they may. I I do think, but Hunt, Fournette, and Cook are right now. So that's three who are going to so get three. it. That's three. I I would. I would, I would if think those one three more guys stay it. healthy, they're all going to run for a thousand yes, yards, right? I agree sure. with that. I'll go over it. I'll think I'll one go over more because well, you just that. need yeah. one more. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everyone, Mike Golick here. Support from Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this, um... Five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. Bill and Owen, congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Giancarlo Stanton hit his 56th home run yesterday. Marlins have 10 games remaining. We're all rooting for him to get to 60 here. And Roger Goodell's contract extension is, quote, getting done, according to our Adam Schefter. A source telling Shefty the deal is, quote, getting papered right now. We'll have Shefty in studio in an hour. We'll talk about it then. Sports Center brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Don't let the name fool you. Dollar Shave Club has way more than just razors. Try their first month starter set. With travel size shave butter, body cleanser, and an executive razor, all for just five dollars. After that, replacement cartridges ship for just a few bucks in a month. A few bucks a month, I should say. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash Mike. Twitter reaction here, J. Ryan Duddleson tweets, to the pay attention, don't sit there crowd. Do we expect only people who have pro reflexes to sit in those seats? How about a 70-year-old? That's the thing. Again, I told the story. I've only sat in seats like that once in my entire life at a baseball game. And until you sit there, you don't realize just how Fast, yeah, that ball yeah. is coming at you. And, and and do you have to be somewhat aware of where you're sitting and what can happen? Yes, you have to be. But to sit there and say that, you know, a 105-mile-an-hour screaming baseball that comes at you, that you should have the the quickness of a ball player to be able to deflect that or catch it or, or, or knock it down, that's a tough call. <laughs> not, not only that, but it isn't easy to be – fully fixated on every pitch yeah. in a nine-inning baseball game. I mean, what we're basically saying is you better be vigilant, <laughs> if, especially if you're going to bring your kids. And, and that's the point of the story I was telling. I had my kids with me, um, and they were little then. I don't remember exactly what year this was, but my kids were little, much too little to be paying total attention to everything that's going on. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, I was nervous. I mean, really nervous, because uh, if a ball comes at you that fast, I could try and knock it. I probably would knock it down, but A, it would hurt me, which yeah. I'm not looking forward to. Yeah. 
And B, what have I missed? You know, I mean, it's just yeah. it it it, yeah. it that it should that you don't want to have to take that into account no. when you're going to a baseball no. game. No. Like it should just be fun. It should just be a fun day at the so ballpark. I, so I think we're there. I, I think we're there with uh, with the netting. It, it's at other ballparks we know, as we, you've talked about with Japan, and I'm sure at minor league ballparks you have them as well. And and I, I just think we're it's that time. There's a lot of these. There's so many of them. I feel obligated to read it. As crazy as it sounds to me, Danny tweets: Fans should uh, they should give face masks to children and people who have ADD. Or the, another one here that says: Supply optional helmets oh. with some sort of plexiglass face protector for Seriously? people sitting in those sections. Is that where we are now? I mean, all of a sudden we're going to have like Star netting. Wars-esque max- put up masks. What, what, put up netting. Is it the end of the world? It, it does. It does feel like we just have to do it. I mean, it really does. I understand why they don't want to do it, but it makes more sense to me than having everyone sitting there wearing batting helmets with face, you know, plexiglass face masks <laughs> yeah. affixed to them. Keep the Twitter reaction coming through the one eight hundred flowers dot com Twitter feed. Nothing makes up for your fantasy football obsession quite like surprising your family with a bouquet from one eight hundred flowers dot com. And to order thirty six autumn roses for just thirty six dollars, go to one eight hundred flowers dot com slash ESPN. Okay, so again, we'll have Shefty in here in an hour, and he'll talk about any number of football topics up to an including, I suppose, football trades, mm-hmm. which aren't particularly common. I came across a story yesterday that kind of stopped me in my tracks because this isn't something I, I thought was out there. Frank Isola, who's as plugged in on the NBA as just about anybody you want to come across and certainly very close with the Knicks, writes, quote, Carmelo Anthony's camp is cautiously optimistic that a trade deal with Houston will be struck before Monday and trying not to think about the potential media circus that will take place if Carmelo is still with the Knicks. Two weeks ago, Carmelo's wife, Lala, said the family thought a trade would have been completed by now. Mentally, Carmelo and his family have moved on to Houston. Reality is another story. Hopefully Mills and Perry, the president and GM of the Knicks, will have the right answers when they address the media on Friday because the Carmelo issue isn't going away until until he goes away. Now, did I believe, have I long believed that these talks continue to take place? Sure. We've, we've been hearing about that and knowing about that for what feels like months and months now. But Carmelo's camp is cautiously optimistic a deal will be struck before Monday. Uh, using the word imminent like that, that, and the family have moved on mentally to Houston. Mike, I'm not going to lie to you. That took me by surprise. Yeah, me as well. Uh, and, and when you, you mentally move on, you know, your camps aren't that far off uh, to when they're going to be starting. And if you got a guy – now, listen, it, it, it's not like if the trade doesn't happen, he can't get back into, you know, the groove and if he's going to be playing for the Knicks. So it's not like, oh, my God, he's mentally gone, so he's going to be of no use to the Knicks. In fact, if he stays there, I don't buy that at all. But, boy, it seems like this one's far I, – I had completely kind of put it to the side – as well, this isn't going to happen before the season. That would that would be interesting if the, if this one gets done and by Monday. Uh, so you know you have Harden and Chris Paul and Carmelo. You know what does it do for that team? Are they are they better than the the Golden State? No, not not at all. Uh, but that's an interesting matchup, uh, interesting group there on on what they would do and what the future would hold. Because there's a lot of us that think even after next year, Chris Paul may be somewhere else. Maybe Melo would too. I don't know. Uh, but this would uh, this would be interesting if if the Nick era with Carmelo would finally be over. I've been telling you for the longest time, and I'm going to call you when this happens. I'm going to call happen. into Golick and Wingo on the day this happens, and I'm going to have my laugh. Yeah, you, you okay. Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, Chris Paul, and Dwayne Wade will all be on the same team next year. No, meaning. By, by, by the time training camps open in 2018. I don't know for sure which team it will be, mm-hmm. but they will all be on the same team. That could be our last bet. Yeah, what, I mean, we won't be on the same show at that point, but we can still make a bet. Absolutely. I can have to do something really awful on mine, or you can have to do something really awful right, on yours. Right, I there look you forward go. to that greatly, because I'm going to win this one. No, you're not. This is right. They're you, all are, are you going that to be on the same team. Are that confident you're going to win? I, I, let's put it you this way. got to shave your head. If, no, I'm not doing that. Well, no, no wait. I'm, I'm not shaving my how head. confident you no, are. I've never been. Hair will grow back. I'm not confident enough in anything that I would say that. I, I'll say this. We had a lot of this talk of them getting ripped out and stuff. You get a nipple ring. No, I'm not getting a nipple ring. Come on! I'm not how, getting a nipple how ring. How confident are you? Let, let me go back. Let me go back. 
he, he is, I, 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 will, I will couch it only this way, okay? I believe that is their plan. I believe they'll do it. I'm not 100% sure that for a variety of circumstances, it just won't work out. Like, there's no question. You talk to Steve and A and people like that. They know that, that the, the plan originally was Carmelo and Chris Paul to be together at, at the, the wedding and the toast and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. People have heard those stories. And then Carmelo's contract situation came into, it, to, came into play. Mm-hmm. Any number of things can happen, injury, et cetera. But all other things being equal, I believe that those four guys plan to be together I think they will be together, and if not, I'm betting right now a minimum of three of them will be together. Oh, it's either all or nothing for this bet. No, I said all four. I'm not betting my uh, 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 a shaving of the head on all four. I will bet something because I do believe it'll happen, but I'm not betting that. I'm, uh, let me make it clear. I'm not, yeah. ma- and I think I've been making this clear for yeah. 15 years. I'm not making that bet for anything, literally anything. I've been disappointed for 18 years. I understand that. You had to have, I'll tell you the one I was most afraid of. Mm-hmm. The one that I sat by the television. I'll never forget this as long as I live. And um, uh, the, the coach of, uh, of, of Pitt, who is now the coach uh, down in, oh. at his, at his uh, alma mater. Um, oh, his name just jumped out of my head. What is it? Jamie Dixon. Jamie Dixon. Was the coach of Pitt, and they had a really good team that year, and they wound up, they lost, I, I want to say, to Villanova in the Elite Eight. And that was the game that was going to decide it between mm-hmm. us. And I love Jamie Dixon. We got to know him over the years. Yes, a we great did. guy, yeah. and I like Pitt, and I wanted to root for them. But I am screaming at the television for Villanova because that won me the bet the year that you wound up having to get your legs waxed. Legs waxed. That was the one I was the most scared of. Wait, what what were you going to have to do? The same thing. Oh, your loser to... was going to get their legs waxed. You and were I scared really of that? I mean, you do that. it every two weeks. <laughs> I do not. I mean, are you serious? I mean, that's something that, that's part of your your – for what it's worth, I've yeah. never gotten my legs waxed. All right, we just got a text. All right, let me, let me pause on that because we just got a text from Woj relative to this story that we're oh, talking boy. about, which is very important. All right, so we will add to this as Woj, we go. putting this in our place. Uh, let me find quickly, and, and uh, I'll read you the Woj thing in just a second. But because we had that there, we're talking about Mason Rudolph. I was looking yesterday. Um, McShay put out his own big board, his mm-hmm. update. He doesn't call it the big board, but his top 32 pro- NFL draft prospects. And I wanted to see how many quarterbacks were in it. He doesn't have Mason Rudolph as one of his top 32 prospects. No. He doesn't have Lamar Jackson as one of his top no, 32 just the prospects. three quarterbacks. Just the three quarterbacks, and in a little different order. He has Sam Darnold, the number one player in the draft, and he has Josh Allen, the kid from Wyoming, mm-hmm. number two. Now, a lot of people are falling off, He's jumping struggling. off. He's struggling. So he's, he plays for Wyoming, and for those who are not following this, because most people don't follow Wyoming football, but if you root for a team that's going to draft a quarterback, you're paying attention. They've played two Power Five conference yeah. teams Opened already up this with season. Iowa, got smoked by me through and then Oregon, and and, yeah. and, and he, they've gotten they've gotten obliterated. Which I understand that he's playing with with right. inferior talent, but his numbers have been really bad. They have, they have. But you know, you again, just as good numbers, I don't get hung up on. I be careful of bad numbers as well. It's you look at interceptions. What were the interceptions like? Were they tip balls? Were they on the money? Did was he reading? Did he go the right way? Did he lock onto that receiver? Is that what caused the interception? Was it just an errant pass that was the interception? There are reasons that you look, you know, forward to like Mason Rudolph. I'm going to tell us straight here in a little bit, and I'm going to show you why I like what I see from him going to the next level because of how the pro game is played and what he does. Even though he has, you know, the tag of a Big Twelve quarterback, can they be successful? in the NFL. It hasn't been there. You know, the, the Andy Reid is banking that Pat Mahomes can from Texas Tech, who they drafted, and Mason Rudolph, I think, is growing in a lot of people's stature for the next level. Allen, for what it's worth, has played three games against Power 5 opponents in his career. They're 0-3. He's thrown one touchdown and eight interceptions. Yeah. And in one of these games, he had nine completions in right. the entire game. So, and then he is, but he's, but, but Shefty, not, not Shefty, excuse me, McShay, has him as the number two prospect in the whole draft. And then he has Josh Rosen down a couple of spots. Um, I actually like the way Josh Rosen throws the ball. Me too. Josh, forgetting the cross-the-field, gunslinging mentality interception, that was, you know, you, 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 as I said, I'd rather pull a guy back than, than, than say, give me more. I, I almost, of the three, I love the way he throws the ball. Darnold, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of as well. Allen, I'll watch more of, especially the interceptions, again, just to see how they were. Uh, but Rosen, I, I do like the way Rosen throws the ball. All right, let me go back to what we were talking about here. I, I read you that story suggesting that, that at least it would make you think that a trade of Carmelo Anthony to the Rockets might be imminent. 
Frank Isola writing, Anthony's camp is cautiously optimistic that a deal will be struck before Monday. And uh, our Adrian Wojnarowski was listening and t- uh, texted mm-hmm. our staff, FYI, there are no talks ongoing with Houston. Okay. And we tried to get Woj on, but he's busy with something. He couldn't come on right now. But that's he's saying there are no talks ongoing with Houston. That doesn't necessarily mean, because they've had talks, it mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that everyone kind of doesn't know what everyone is willing to do, I'm assuming. And they couldn't put a trade together pretty quickly if both sides wanted to. Right. But if both sides liked what was on the table, maybe a deal would already have been done. Exactly. All I'm saying is today's Thursday. Yep. So the idea that a deal is going to be done between now and Monday is pretty quick. Start of camps, too. I mean, so as we said, this is the earliest the NBA season starts, what, October 18th? Yeah. They've they've, they've moved that up like almost two full weeks from what it used to be. I, I think it's only a week or so compared to what it was last year. Right. But, I mean, I remember when the season would start at, at the very end of – like Halloween would be right. the first day of right. the season. But they've done that to try and stretch the games out. They right. don't want um, the back-to-backs and the four games in five nights. And I, I get it. I love it. I love the, what Silver is doing. I, I, he's a, a, a proactive commissioner. He's recognizing problems, and he's doing something about them. Right. Um, and, and does it solve all of the problems? No, but at least he's making some adjustments that go in that direction. And it's all in the interest of fans getting to see the players that they want to see play in the games that they pay good money to go to. So so whatever the point is, could Carmella be dealt by Monday? Feels highly unlikely. It does feel unlikely. I mean, it wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world, but it does feel unlikely because it really felt like that thing went on the back burner, you know, and wasn't going to rear its head again uh, until after the season or another opportunity to do it. But that would be something. Well, what does what did our old friend Andrew Brandt always say? You know, when your back's against a wall, man. Deadline yeah. spur action yeah, does. Well, if you get if you're going to count Monday as a deadline. Right which means they open camp, which means mellow has got to be there, which means the entire New York media and beyond mm-hmm. descends upon them and has a million questions about Mello's future. And it can be as simple as, I mean, the answer can be as simple as, I'm here, I'm playing here, right? I, I'll play here as, as long as I'm a well, Nick, I mean, I'll play as hard as see, I can, that, and that's it. That's the thing. You're a professional. He's been around a long time. If it doesn't, you know, if there are no talks with Houston or he's not getting traded to Houston and we hear the reports he's mentally checked out already to Houston, as I said, he's a professional. It's not like he's going to forget how to play or his mind's not going to be there. He's going to play the, the biggest point of contention he had was Phil Jackson. And Phil Jackson's not there anymore. So, you know, if he is with the Knicks, he just gets back into the groove. All right. We'll continue with Stu Gotts and more next. Mike and Mike. First time skydiving? Sure is. Okay. You just open the door like this and you jump. Yeah, wait, wait. Should, should we be like it? Tandem? Tandem? That's a great idea! Uh, are you a certified instructor? No, but I love parachutes and I love people! Here we go! <laughs> you wouldn't take chances with an uncertified skydiving instructor. Don't do it with your finances. Find a certified financial planner professional today at letsmakeaplan.org. CFP. Work with the highest standard.